Before publishing or delivering our Excel template to the end users, you should perform a few steps of validation or checks. These steps are very important to make sure that our final product is of the best quality possible and is free of any errors. And so we will be talking about in this video a list of nine different things that will be in our release checklist. Now let's look at them one by one. The first one is testing. Testing. So this is where we provide more input data and then test our template. While testing, it's important to test many different scenarios as possible. For example, think of a scenario where the user does not provide any required, one of the required inputs. So what happens to our calculations? If the user doesn't select any of the days as weekend dates, is our formula still going to take care of that scenario and give the correct results? If the table of holidays is empty, is that still okay? If the user enters the data in the vacation type in the settings and then goes and enters some vacation values and then comes back and changes the vacation type here, now you have a you know, lack of sync between this and the vacation data. Now what happens to the calculations? So you just need to think of these different things that could potentially happen from the user's point of view and then ensure that the, the calculations and the formula are able to account for that scenario. And we may find that we need to update our formulas to include, for example, an if error function, which will wrap up the scenario uh, result and then give uh, not an error, but a blank or some other things. So we have to test it as much as we can. More thorough the testing is, the better the template is going to be. However, it is very important that we don't overdo this thing because it's a very time consuming process to you know, consider all possible scenarios. And as we try to account for those scenarios, our formulas could become more and more complex. So there is a very fine line before which we say, okay, we're not gonna make the formulas any more complex. Hence, ensure that all the common use cases are tested, but not worry about extremely unlikely scenarios. You could definitely add some notes and guides along the way to ensure that the user is aware what data is a required input and what things should not be done so that you are telling the user enough instructions to avoid the incorrect inputs to be entered in the first place. That's how you can manage the simplicity and the functionality components of building an Excel template. The second part is to review all the formulas that we have entered. We have entered quite a few formulas over the course and especially some of the complex ones, some of the simpler ones. And so there are formulas everywhere and we want to make sure that we review them one final time and ensure that they are accurate and uh, uh, reflective of the functionality we want. So I don't have to go into each cell and test it. What I do is to go to the, I know that all of these cells have the same formula. And so what I do is to go to the first cell in this area and then check if the formula is correct. And then I actually go and copy it all over, as you know, edit in the edit mode, control enter. So now that applies to all the cells. So this is how I make sure that all the formulas are reviewed um, one final time before we publish the template. The next part is to review named ranges. So the named ranges are available in the formulas name manager, and this is where you can find all the named ranges that are used in this file, Excel file, and there are two parts to it. So one is to make sure that there are no errors. So for example, this is a broken uh, link. So this named range cell uh, named range is pointing to a cell that does not exist anymore. It looks like I had created at one point and then I might have deleted that cell. So that's something that I'm not using anymore. So I'm going to go and hit delete, delete, close. So I'm gonna save my file. So this saves the error uh, named range will not be there anymore. The other thing you would want to do is to go through all, the, all of them and ensure that you didn't create anything else that may not be broken, but if you're not still using it in any of the formulas, it's better to remove them because you want to make sure that the file is as lean, meaning as fewer things as needed so that it's fast and lean and the file size is going to be less as well. So remove any unused named ranges. The next step is to go to the conditional 
formatting menu in the conditional formatting menu make sure that you review all the formulas or the used in the conditional formatting and remove any that are not being that are not necessary and also ensure that the the all of these have the right formulas in them correct um, colors in them as you need so ensure that they are all correct the fifth part is to do a one final formatting check i know we already did the 10 point formatting uh, checklist for each of the the dashboard and the employee report but i would also recommend you to go and make sure that the other sheets like the employee sheet vacation sheet and the settings they're all having the same consistent formatting look and feel uh, the fonts font styles colors they're all the same remove the grid lines even in the setting sheet um, even though you know it's it's a setting sheet and not a data in output sheet um, if you want to just have a cleaner consistent look you would want to go and make sure that the grid lines are removed and make sure that all the printable sheets are print friendly meaning that when you print it prints nicely in one or two pages as needed um, so one final formatting check before we publish sixth step is to ensure cell and sheet protection so for example um, i'm going to go through a quick five-step process by which you can protect um, a dashboard or any sheet which has a lot of formulas so for example in this case this sheet uh, is not protected already because the protect sheet is on here which means that it's not protected already now the five-step process begins with selecting all the cells control a so now this has selected all the cells in the sheet. Now I do control one and now I can, that is control one is to open the format cells. That's the second step to go into protection and say uncheck the locked, which means that now when I hit okay, all of the cells are actually unprotected. And Excel is going to show all these error warnings basically to say, hey, these are formulas. Are you sure you don't want to protect them or lock them? Um, and we will lock them shortly. But in the next step, what we're going to do is to now only select the formula cells. So I go in here to home, select, find and select formulas. So now the good thing about this is it's only going to select the formula cells. And now when I do control one and go to the format cells, now I can actually say lock them. You can choose to also do hidden, which means that the user will not be able to see the formulas. I choose usually to uh, leave it as, um, as it is because I don't want to hide the formulas from my user. I just want them to not edit it. So I lock them, but I don't hide them. So I say, okay. So now Excel will remove all the warnings because we have uh, protected the formula cells again. And then the last step here is to go into the review and protect sheet. And here, um, the first thing is we have all these selected, which means we are going to let the user select our cells, both the locked and the unlocked. And we are going to let them change the formatting, like colors, fonts, and everything if they want to, um, they can change it. But I'm not gonna let them insert some columns or insert rows um, without needing a password. So all of these checked items can be done without the password but anything that is not checked the user has to actually come in and then put in the password so you could put in any password by default i put in zara as a password and then i hit okay it'll ask me again i do in zara now it's protected so what happens now is if i double click on any cell to edit it it'll give me the warning to say the cell is in a protected sheet now you have to um, if i click okay I, I can't edit that. I have to hit unprotect, put my password, and then it'll let me edit the formula. So this is a protection that you can build into the sheet and you, will, you can repeat the same steps in the employee report sheet as well. Um, so every sheet which has formulas, you would want to do that. There is an exception though. There isn't the, in the input sheets where there is a table like this, where you want the table to auto expand when you enter more data, you don't, you should not protect that sheet. The reason is if we protect the sheet, then when the user enters, let's say I'm going to enter employee 29. So you saw that it automatically expanded. That feature will not work if we protect the sheet. 
This is something that there has been a request to Microsoft to add this as a feature in the future, but right now they don't support this. So we, it is very important for us to have the auto expanding feature. So that's the reason why I usually leave the t sheets which have Excel tables, I leave them unprotected. I don't protect them. Um, there is, um, if for example, it's in the setting sheet where I don't want the user to enter more, then I can protect it. But here, I, I want the user to enter more vacation types. I want the user to be able to enter more holidays, especially. So I'm not going to protect the sheets. Uh, so protect everything where there is no Excel table where the user has to keep entering data. This is purely an output or a display dashboard. There's no, there's nothing for the user to keep entering the data here. So I'm going to leave this protected, which is important so that they don't uh, change the formulas. The, mo the more important part of protection is that the user does not by mistake edit a formula cell and then that leads to inaccuracies. So we don't want that to happen. It's actually in the, in the interest of the user that I usually protect the formulas, but I, I don't hide them because I want them to see it and understand what it's doing, but I just don't want them to actually edit it by mistake and lead to inaccuracies. Next step, the seventh step in our checklist is the hiding the help sheets. So if, um, for example, I've already hidden it here, but I'm gonna open it or unhide it again. If you remember, we have a help sheet. And so this is something that we don't have to show the user. And so I would right click and hide it so that the user does not get to see that sheet. Um, so similarly, when you're building templates, if there are any hidden calculation sheets that you don't have, you don't want the user to be viewing it, uh, then you can hide them. The eighth step in our process is to add instructions or guide, um, guidance basically to the user. In this case, I had some space in the setting sheet, so I actually entered some steps, like how, the, how can the user enter the um, use this template? Enter the vacation types, weekends and holidays, enter the employee list, enter the vacation data, and then view the team calendar for the chosen month. View the report from the employee report sheet. So this is very, very, you know, short and like brief set of instructions uh, because usually I provide a more detailed set of instructions with step-by-step -step instructions with um, screenshots and video demos and everything. So I would actually provide a link to my page where I have more detailed instructions. If you plan to do, um, you know, if you, if you plan to publish a template as a standalone file with no website, then you can actually add another sheet, which will have, which where you can put in a lot more text information about how to use the template, add as much detail as possible. So you can create a separate instruction sheet um, for the user. The other, the other approach to do would be also to provide uh, comments. So for example, I can go and say insert a comment and I can type in some things for the user to um, instruct the user what to do and what not to do. So I can just say enter all employees. So this is basically the, I don't have to mention my name. This, this could be your comment. And, um, and then I can just make sure that the show comments so it'll always show there and then you can edit the comment if you want. Um, there is some flexibility, but it's not the best way of putting comments um, that Excel provides, but it still helps wherever you have any, uh, you can do it on the uh, about, you can probably create a new row above this header and then put in your comments. Um, so for example, I could do insert and I could write it up here or I could put it as a comment or I can just say enter, end date if em employee has left company. So I can do something like this and I will wrap this up and I would usually um, make it less uh, in terms of font size. So this could be a way you are providing guidance to the user as to what to do with each column that the user has to enter. So there are different techniques. I, I followed this um, more where I uh, would actually create a row and then put in some notes as to what the user should enter. And I would also provide uh, instructions which are brief and specific to the point. In some cases, I've actually provided an additional sheet, like a glossary explaining the different terms that I've used. It depends on what the temp how complex or how simple the template is. And also 
who you are addressing, which users are going to use the template. If they are very knowledgeable about this topic, then you don't need to provide a lot of instructions. But if they're, if they're new and you don't know who they are, especially in my case where I publish templates on inzara.com, I don't um, you know, know all of them and they are being used by hundreds of thousands of people across the world from different countries, different companies. So they all have different levels of knowledge of the topic that I have. And so I try to make sure that I do enough instructions so that it covers everybody and make sure that everybody can follow along. So um, choose the right level of instructions or guidance that you're going to put into the template based on who you are addressing the template to. The last item I have in this release checklist is the file name, which is very simple. Uh, even though we may start with a specific uh, um, file name when we start building the template, over the course of the development, we may have uh, the need to change the template file to be something very specific. Like for example, it could be the employee vacation and attendance tracker. So you would want to go in and then, you know, save as, and then put in the name of the file that is most uh, representative of the template that you have created and the functionality that it provides. So make sure that you, um, if, if you need to, change the name of the file which you're finally saving, which you're going to publish or send to your audience or your end user. So that completes our release checklist chapter, which is the list of all items that we will check and ensure they're all correct before we release the template or publish the template to our end users.